I was on my way to work when you got in front of me Cut me off, no blinker, show when 10 under speed I waited for my chance to get back in front of you But you blocked the lane with the car next to you When you hit the yellow, I tried to follow you on through No way I get left behind and wait for the light That's when I spotted the flashing lights and sirens too Can't believe I have to pay just because of you I've got a lot of thoughts, things I want to do I've got a list I work on when I've got nothing to do It's full of things that make me squeeze my pencil as I write I can't wait to share them all with you, perhaps even tonight Quiet rage, quiet rage, it whispers never shouts Quiet rage, quiet rage, never let it up Quiet rage, quiet rage, I never had a doubt That you would push me over, internally freak out I only caught the plague because you brought it into work that day What? All right, Eric Burgess here, or, or composing gloves uh, with Music Marketing TV. Today we're taking a look at Dream Tonics. I want to cover this whispering section, but I wanted you to get a feel for the song. The song's pretty much done. It's been mixed. It's been mastered. It's been written. There's like some very, very small things that I think I may still adjust after hearing it on a couple systems. But I wanted to walk you through sort of the whispering section uh, of the song. So, um, and the way I set the sessions up when I work with uh, Dream Tonics inside of FL Studio. So normally this is on a separate screen and I am running a screen on, that's 4K, which is this screen. And then all the other, I have three other monitors and those are all in, in 1080. So <laughs> the, the scaling of plugins gets really weird. And this usually sits on my second monitor and is like really big. And that's just where it lives. Um, I treat it almost like a session unto itself. You can see there's a, a lot of parts in here, uh, a lot of voices used. The main lead voice is this HXVOC. I love this voice. I've tried it for a bunch of things. It's really cool. Um, and he's got a really great nasally tone, which is what you're hearing mostly here at the end, I actually have them um, screaming. If we come over here to the end, uh, we can hear that for this bit here. Quiet rage, quiet rage. Whispers never shouts. Quiet rage, quiet rage. Quiet rage, quiet rage. I never had a doubt that I could push you over. Externally freak out. Yeah, so that, that was kind of fun. So maybe we'll do a separate video on that. But I want to talk about the whispering. Okay, so let's get to the whispering. Just so you know how the setup is, how I like to uh, to run with it. And the whispering is a bit tricky because I wanted this guy as the main voice, but he does not have a whispering option. If you go over to the vocal modes, there's nothing for whispering. He's got screaming, and I sort of had a plan for that, as you can see. So I really wanted to use this. So the other, the whispering section is actually being handled by Liam. Liam? Liam. I'm going to call him Liam. I'm not sure if that's how you say it. So there is the hook whisper response in the hook whisper. And, uh, and then Hayden also, I have, he's got a really nice soft version. So if we take a look at these guys, um, they're over here. In FL Studio, by the way, if you're looking at this top and you're like, what is this? This is just a track that I just made blank patterns for, and then I shrink it down because they don't have like an arrangement thing like other DAWs do. So I kind of make my own <laughs> to keep me where I am and what I'm doing. So after we come into the chorus, um, there's the initial singing. I've got a lot of thoughts, things I want to do. Got a lot of thoughts. And that's on the chorus. And then when we come over, we get to this whisper section. And if you have the FL Studio link, uh, which I believe is like on by default, uh, when you move this, it actually moves the main session. It is so nice. It's basically ARA for FL Studio. And if we take a look here and hit play, we'll go ahead and solo up just um, the first Liam. Tonight, it will 
whispers never shouts. Never let it up. So these are just with the 100% whisper on. And uh, yeah, you heard it. So the tonight gets whispered. I didn't have to do a lot. Let's go ahead and take out the um, those. I think it's helpful to see the modes. I do a lot of automation with loudness. So this first two night, I didn't really have to mess with very much. I believe it's just like the default what it is. It's on a separate pattern because I I create patterns per section. And so I called this the hook response because it comes in at the end. It's a response. And it's sort of the blend layer between the two. Um, so yeah, it's a totally separate voice. And we go into loudness is the only thing that is being automated throughout this thing. And it's over here. I just bring it down and it makes it just much more whispery. So if we listen to this. I never had a doubt that you would push me over internally fake out. So a lot of it's just repeated lines. Um, with these, I don't think I had any words that really gave me an issue. The word quiet was a bit of a, a pain. And sometimes I had to spell it like K-A-W-I-E-T. And if you look at the phonemes for quiet, um, they line up. So this is the, the, the first one. Here's quiet. And you see, that's kind of how they spell it. Occasionally, it would just sound funny. And I would wind up changing it. But I wound up going back to quiet with the plus sign. And uh, it worked out good in most cases. Every now and then, I found myself jumping back and forth on which one I liked more. I don't think there was a lot of change in any of these sections, just getting the notes down. And there's a bunch of videos on how I like to work with it. I am a big fan of singing it in and then bringing it and then editing every single thing into place. Uh, each verse, each phrase probably took around four or five hours of pretty detailed editing to get it to sound the way it does, to make it sound really clear. Um, and that's just, I listen to every single word. I listen to like, how would a singer sing this? I try to find songs where singers sing the word quiet. <laughs> And I said, do they emphasize this more? Do they emphasize that more? And then I'll come in, and if I feel necessary, I'll change things in here. Because it was being whispered, I remember there was a word in the lead that had the word plague. That was a really tricky word to get right because it, it's in the second verse. It's just not a word you say very much, and so it just sounds unnatural. So it's kind of hard to, to gauge what a good pronunciation of that word is when sung. But using references is honestly a huge, huge part of this. So if we bring these both in, this is the initial hook and this is it. And then there is a second layer. And this one is Haydn on the soft. So let's let's leave Haydn out for the moment. Just listen to the first two. Quiet rage, quiet rage. It whispers never shouts. Quiet rage, quiet rage. Never let it up. Quiet rage, quiet rage. I never had a doubt that you would push me over. Yeah, so you hear them together at the end. They are in mostly similar sonic placements as far as uh, where they sit in the mix. They are pretty much, they're off to the left, just a hair is how they kind of sound. And you can tell that there's like two voices going on, but uh, it is the same voice model. And then I bring in Haydn too, and he's got a really, really great soft uh, option. So these are just maxed out the whole way. And he is doubling this, this top voice. So if we come back over here and listen. Quiet rage, quiet rage. His whispers never shouts. Quiet rage, quiet rage. Never let it up. Quiet rage, quiet rage. I never had a doubt that you would push me over. Internally freak out. So you can hear the, the bits of chorusing and it sounds like a vocal double. It's a completely different voice, but it sounds really good together. And then it gets thinner when, when they're talking, like it's a single voice. They're saying the more interesting bit. And then there's the repetition, like a, like a chant almost. It's basically a chant. They're just saying quiet rage repeatedly with just slightly different notes between them. But that's the, that's the whispering. And, and that's it for the whispering. It's just these three voices. And it's simply taking the soft up and 
the whispering up for Liam. So you, you kind of have to know these are here to know that this is something you can do that you can grab. Definitely worth taking a look at. It's a really, really cool way to add some dynamics to your song, make it feel a lot more alive, and just don't be afraid of jumping from one voice to another voice, especially if you notice that, you know, another voice may have a more suitable, like, um, voice mode. Because, like, here we've got subdued, but it's just, it's not going to work. It's just not the same. It's not the same. It ain't going to work. I had to have the whispering in order for this to work. Let's do a quick breakdown of the words and the phrases. I find that often hitting it right on the money is like quantized is actually pretty good because the voices nudge like you could see how the bleed over the bar is and they're a little late. This often is is actually the timing's fantastic. I normally don't find myself needing to push or lag very much with with these sorts of things so it's quiet rage and just the way these hit came out great so i left a lot of these things alone for the chance along with the uh, pitch envelope pretty much what i wanted same thing for the second one you can see this one's a little more reined in and then for the phrases here is how the phrases came out so whispers i just went with the ampersand here never shouts again chose not the ampersand the plus sign again just a plus sign didn't need anything there uh same thing here just a plus sign for never um I, uh, I find myself often when it comes to it going back and forth sometimes with it you want to put the t sound there and we could come in here and change this to you know use a t but it's a little too enunciated sometimes never let it up yeah, never let it out. It's like almost too much. Never let it out. And so with this, you know, if you really wanted that T, maybe because it does give an element of closeness because the extra sibilance sounds like it's like right in your ear. So that's kind of someone whispering. It'd probably be more like that. Quiet. Never let it out. But it's it this the D sound in this case, I like the D sound more. Let it out. I mean, yeah, you lose the the T, so it's up to you. The T has a little bit more of an ear tickle to it, you know, like someone's whispering in your ear um, directly, and you know, maybe that's something I could do to make it even more, um, give the whisper more of a close sort of creepy vibe to it. Uh, but you can see how how this goes through. So occasionally, I'll be going in and adding these T's in some locations. But for the most part with the whispering, I actually didn't have to worry too much. Like the whispering just sort of came together and it was just knowing it was here and coming up with a cool part where I could use it. Like the arrangement backs down. It leaves room for the whispering. Um, the drums back off a bunch. And yeah, just in the context of everything, it just sounds like really good. Quiet rage, quiet rage. It whispers, never shouts. Quiet rage, quiet rage, never let it up. And when I'm listening, I'm listening for like each, like the T's, the D's, every pass is a bit different. Sometimes I'm listening for vowels and I'm asking myself how understandable would a real singer be? And it's because this is a huge contrast, right, to the lead vocal you heard at the beginning. But anyways, I thought I'd show you this. Um, I think it's a really cool use case for the whispers. This is one of those ones that, man, this using stuff like this and having this variation in your song can make it sound a lot more real. I showed this song to a bunch of different people, and because of the yelling at the end and the whispering, um, a lot of people, you know, they asked who the lead singer was. <laughs> they wanted to know who sang it because they said he killed it. And I was like, oh, this is really good. Um, that was a, it was a vocal synth. <laughs> There's not actually a person. Uh, so, but it's looking at that, looking at the phonemes, checking those, getting the timing right. With these, a lot of these things were just right on the money. If we take a look at one of the verses here for, and you can see sort of how I navigate this, this top area is like super, super handy. You can see there's a lot of adjustments here, like little things. And these things, um, you find them, you mess with them. There's some more over here. There's breath marks. Those are a big thing. Bringing down sibilances sometimes, like flashing, if we listen for that. 
That's when I spotted the flashing lights and sirens too. I didn't like how the the one it came up with was. Sometimes I'll go in there and I'll be changing the phonemes. There's a there's a really handy phoneme chart I always have open, and you begin to memorize it after you have looked at it for so long, because it's not very long. There's actually not too many things in there. Here uh, I changed it to the two because. It sounded better enunciated with a T rather than the typical D that it picks. And you can set up some of these things with the dictionary to like default to them. But I like, I actually like the defaults generally, and I'll, I'll just change them if I need to. Can't believe I have to pay just because of. But because that lands on a B and it's like, it just made more sense. If it was like, I can't believe I have to pay, like, no, no English speaker would say it that way. Uh, the T lands on a very pronounced area. It's like a tongue reset, I guess is what I would call it. <laughs> and so the T would be really, really enunciated as opposed to the typical lazy D like in water. Um, the T is in a the middle of the word or and it's not a not a huge connecting word as far as something that would be like de-emphasized. So things like this are like what you're going to be doing most of the time, just optimizing this stuff. But hopefully this gives you a little bit of inspiration. Uh, if you write something cool with some whispering, drop it down below. I'd love to give it a listen. I'm looking for more and more cool demos of, you know, Dream Tonics music. Uh, it's so capable. I'm just kind of shocked there's not more of it. So if you make something cool with it, especially using the whispering, let me know. I want to check it out and see what kind of results you got. Subscribe and hit that bell icon for future videos and have a blessed day.